Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Simply Stocks and today I'm going to talk about Ram Krishna Forging, an interesting mid-cap auto ancillary play, in fact a small cap auto ancillary play which has been doing well on the numbers front. So let's understand about the business, let's get started. First of all a disclaimer that this is not a stock recommendation and people taking any position to any share that I talk about should do that with their own due diligence and research and I am not in favor or against any company that I talk about. Before I talk about Ram Krishna Forging, here's a small request that kindly support me on Patreon. Once you do that, it will help me grow the channel, help you also ask me questions and eke out answers in greater detail. Once you get that $10 membership, you'll have access to my portfolio, my watch list, and number of podcasts I put up from time to time. And also, if you can pay $100 upfront, you get one year access by paying for 10 months uh, and get one year access. For, for detailed market or company talk, you can directly email me and we can work things out with a fee. And also, if you cannot pay on Patreon or YouTube, you can directly email me and you can get the yearly WhatsApp membership. Now about the company established in 1981, Ramkrishna Forging is into auto components manufacturing at boast of marquee clients uh, spread across 13 locations across India and have global presence with clients across Europe, Asia and India and their clients include Maruti, Honda, Bajaj Auto etc. The market cap of the company is 3000 crores and the stock has dipped about 20% from the top in the recent uh, past couple of weeks. If you look at the numbers, then these are Q1 numbers which were pretty strong. Sales went up by 68%, profits doubled to around 51 crores and that's why my eyes got uh, into it or, or this one came under the screener uh, that this is one of the auto ancillary that is coming back after four years of a very uh, bad performance you can say even they went into losses in a couple of quarters in fy21 so uh, things are looking now much better low promoter but high institutional holding of 40 percent is pretty good roe has now come to around 18 percent margins at 21 percent has dipped but uh, is coming back to some semblance after a dismal FY21 and 22. So if you look at the results at a glance, margins are down 200 basis points year on year and remain stable quarter on quarter, that's pretty good. And being down 200 basis points is not that much considering the kind of business environment that we are in, especially in the global economic situation. Uh, the margins are down 300 basis points compared to June 2019 when there was no pandemic. Uh, so it's also not that bad, although uh, it has dipped, but you need to understand that what kind of economic scenario globally we are in. And that's why margins to be down with such higher uh, cost of inputs uh, is, is pretty decent enough. So operating profits have gradually increased since December 2020. They have done well on the operational front. And it's commendable performance in a difficult business environment. You need to understand that uh, globally auto companies have gone through a real turmoil over the last five years. And Rav Krishna has not been any, you can say, different. And, and things are now coming back with the kind of export orders they are getting and exports now picking up. So demand to pick up as global environment and chip issues settle. Remember that we have had that issue of uh, semiconductor chips as well for, for about a year, 12-15 months. So 3-4 quarters, 4-5 to five quarters went there. And so the numbers were expected to be decent but not that good the way the numbers have panned out so it looks like fi24 onwards things will look much much better so numbers are set to improve going forward so this is the revenue picture over the last three years so from in fi19 they did around 1930 crores and this time around they have surpassed it uh, to do 2320 crores now you have to understand in fi22 the first quarter was very difficult between april to june and yet they were able to produce uh, numbers which are better than fi19 and that has been a very good uh, from uh, such a small company in terms of profit, so uh, sorry, uh, so if we go to the profits front, so from 120 crores, the profit has jumped to 200 crores this time around. Uh, so this was uh, pre-pandemic, 120 crores of profit has gone to 
hundred and ninety eight crores or two hundred crores already in FI twenty two. So hopefully FI twenty three will be even bigger, and that is why this company and the stock has come under the radar. That it looks like that things have turned around completely, and from FI twenty three uh, numbers are set to become better, and by FI twenty five things will be even better once things normalize globally and and get going. Uh, across india as well as on the european and us front if you look at the margins margins are better than fi19 as i explained so in fi22 they did 22% versus 20% but over the last uh, one year the margins have dipped for this quarter the margin have dipped 200 basis points from fi19 uh, but uh, from fi20 but uh, things should look much better now uh, as we go along because uh, margins should improve because the cost uh, is reducing with the oil prices coming down uh, metal prices coming down and chip shortages issues now curtailing the cost should come down so from fi24 onwards numbers should be even better on the bottom line If you look at the sales segment wise, uh, you can say breakup of the business So forgings and components uh, account for around 90% of the business and 10% is from the other businesses, whatever they have and the interest uh, you can say they earn uh, from their fixed deposits, etc. Uh, but major business comes from forgings. This is how the product wise performance has been so forgings did extremely well with a 59% uh, growth other businesses of other cast iron and, and other kinds of products uh, for, the, for the auto components that they make uh, plus interest etc that amounted for a 300% jump uh, and so the margins were 100 basis points uh, you can say better in forgings over uh, the last year which, which is a very heartening thing and in the other businesses also they produce three percent margins versus a negative five percent so here also growth is being seen so on the margins front also they did well and that is why when the june numbers came out the stock shot up and and has been doing well although in the last uh, two weeks or so the stock has dipped and is giving a decent correction for anybody to get a fresh entry because i believe uh, that going forward numbers will be better across the board in auto ancillaries in most of them and uh, things should look good for for the auto sector if you look at the geographical breakup uh, for the company then uh, here we have that asia corresponds to around 64 percent of their business uh, the us uh, and north america probably all together canada etc uh, uh, they contribute around 23 percent and 13 percent of the business comes from europe so their europe exposure where there is a bigger turmoil say in uk and in uh, eastern europe etc because of the war uh, their exposure is only 13 percent of the total sales so that is why the company is slightly insulated from global uh, perspective but uh, even in us with higher interest rates there will be some impact but majority of their business is from asia as and and in that majority comes from india so 64 percent of their business is at least insulated from the happenings in europe and us that augurs well for the company if they get more orders plus the company has come out and said in in, in a number of interviews on on television that they are now in the process of getting more orders from north america uh, probably in the second half of fy23 and and for sure in fy24 so they might be executed by the end of fy24 so all the numbers that that i and versage going forward uh, the biggest numbers should come in by fy24 so this is basically a two-year play in which the numbers are set to improve in the next two years they could be volatile for one or two quarters but things should get much better by fy24 so basically numbers should improve by 2024 as uh, their exposure in europe and north america should reap benefit and asian business is doing well and they are expanding much better in uh, asia as well so i think that will continue to perform over the next couple of years so things are coming back into shape here 
Now some important pointers about this business. Strong volume growth seen of over 40% over the last couple of years in the business. That, that is pretty commendable considering the kind of uh, you can say competitive business that they are into. It earns 32% of its revenues from its international business and 68% from domestic. Uh, that is also should be taken into consideration and although revenue split up uh, was the way it was shown to you but overall revenue comes 68% from domestic businesses and 32 from abroad and cv cycle seems like turning around now and things are looking much better and that is what the management was quoting that uh, globally cv cycle is beginning to turn around there is an economy that is picking up and that is why the inflation has uh, picked up in in us so more or less Yes, there could be a lot of cost pressures because of the higher inflationary pressure there. Uh, but overall economy has picked up. So demand for CV has picked up in, in North America. And so they are getting orders from there. Uh, major business from Europe to kickstart from FI24. As I explained, that they mentioned that FI24, they are going to get further orders. And they are on the process of, uh, you can say, jotting down some deals for that. So I think 2024 will be the big year for the company. Company. and it's better to make positions right now being an investor into a company in which numbers should uh, be big in 2024 because at that point of time by the numbers come in uh, the stock would be a lot higher from here where it is trading at at the moment uh, so company do expect a 20 percent revenue growth in fi23 uh, and margins should remain stable to 21 percent that is i'm uh, uh, trying to uh, take out points from uh, whatever conversations that the management has had on business televisions on on news channels so it looks like that the business is now going to pick up and 20 percent revenue growth 21 percent margin uh, we have a fair idea as to how the valuations would be based on fi23 numbers so we'll discuss that now So in terms of valuations, uh, the current EPS for the company is 12 and a half rupees and expected FI23 EPS will be at least 14 and a half rupees, maybe even 15 rupees. We'll see how that goes. But even if we take 14 and a half rupees as the EPS, currently it is trading at around 12 times earnings, not not very expensive it has dipped by the time i am making this uh, presentation by the when i made the presentation the stock was around 200 210 now the stock is around 185 or so so uh, the valuations have become cheaper even in the last couple of weeks and fi24 to see more traction uh, leading to better profitability i believe that the eps will be close to 18 rupees uh 2024 will see more orders from europe as, as the management has mentioned so 18 rupees eps even if we uh see that the stock trades around 20 times uh, we could see the stock around 350 360 but we take a conservative target of 325 over the next couple of years so there's a lot of traction left in the business if the auto ancillary rally continues and auto rally continues this one could be headed all the way to 320 325 over the next two years uh, so it looks extremely attractive here one at 185 187 but be extremely careful because it is an illiquid counter it is a counter in which the market cap is 3000 crores it is a small cap you could see 20 30 move, percent move in a week very easily so so buy in staggered manner and uh, don't buy big so we'll discuss about how the buying strategy should be it is also trading at only one time sales which is also extremely attractive even though companies in the auto ancillary space do not trade at eight or ten times sales but they do trade at uh, three to four times sales if they produce very good numbers so what needs to be done i think those who hold from lower levels should just continue to hold they don't need to uh, worry that much i think current levels are good to buy uh, afresh as well i think around 180 if you get a chance uh, two three percent lower maybe you'll get it in the next week or so you'll get it five percent lower that would be very good levels to get into with a margin of safety do keep a stop loss according to your risk risk appetite if we see a target of 320 coming through uh, then do keep a stop loss at least 15% lower 20% lower from here and do not lose more than 20% so if you buy at 180 probably have a stop loss around 145 
and hold the stock because in small cap companies you never know once the tide turns the stock could go down 60 70 percent so having such stop losses do help uh, looks like it could be a consistent performer up till 2024 and it's a very good two-year pick at the moment considering what the management has uh, said about the uh, numbers forecast for fi24 and how things are panning out on the uh, on the ground but allocate less than five percent of your total holding and i believe best to buy this stock is in uh, complete distress of the market like we had uh, yesterday so probably you can buy some 20 25 percent of the total holding at these levels and wait for further falls later on in the market to accumulate so this was my video on Ram Krishna forging. Please like and subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so you can get my video straight away when I post it. And kindly support me on Patreon. Thanks a lot for watching.